This just so happens to be one of the best-selling headlight restoration kits that you can currently get on the market right now. And the job with any of these types of products is to transform foggy headlights like this into something crystal clear, which I think is very important, especially now we're rolling into the winter months. And I love products like this because it simplifies the whole process. No longer do you have to go out and try and find different grip paper or different compounds or pads. It literally bundles everything in one box. So what do you get inside the box? Well, to be honest with you, not a lot. You get two sanding discs. Now these are labeled one to four, so we're literally gonna go in stages, one, two, three, and four. You also get a mop head, which you would attach onto a drill, and we get some plastic polish on top. Apart from that, there's really nothing else in here. Oh, and we do get an instruction manual, but if you are gifted with very good eyesight, I think you are going to struggle to read this. I mean, look at this, come on, Maguire's, what are you playing at? Anyway, if you are somebody who is perhaps going to purchase something like this down the line, you shouldn't need to rely on the instructions because what I'm about to do now is take you through the complete step-by-step -step process on transforming your headlights. What you can see here is a moderately faded headlight. Now I will follow every step exactly the way they want me to. So the results I'm hoping to achieve will be what you can expect with similar lights. Before we get started, I just thought I'd give you a quick heads up if you're somebody who thinks this kit here is going to include everything you need to safely carry out a proper transformation on these headlights. Unfortunately, that's not the case. No, it's definitely not going to come with a drill. Of course, most kits wouldn't do. But you've also got things like this compound here. Now, this is a very abrasive chemical. It's obviously going to be very strong on plastics, meaning it's also gonna be quite harsh on your skin as well. With any type of car cleaning products, for goodness sake, always wear gloves whenever you can. This stuff can have some negative side effects on your skin and your body, so you just have to take extra precautions. But then it also goes on to say in the instructions, you need to tape up around the light because the last thing you want to do is cause any damage. Now, why would you cause any damage? Well, think about it this way. We're using sanding discs. If I was to, let's say, get carried away, I was going a little bit too quick, and I went off the lights here and I caught some of the paintwork, if I didn't have the tools, the knowledge, or the resources, I would find myself in a bit of a pickle, and it might be quite difficult. And if you're somebody who's a beginner, it might actually cost you a lot more money to repair something like a sanding mark on your bonnet compared to restoring the headlights. So no, we do not have tape included with this kit. It's quite a shame actually. And it also says in the instructions here, if we look closely, you're going to need a cup of water and you are going to need a clear spray bottle with just water in as well. Thankfully, I've got some spares here, but I'm just saying if you're not prepared to do this and you're buying the kit and you're gonna go, right, I've got my drill, I'm good to go. There's just a few more things I think you need to be aware of. With the edges all taped up, it was time to begin. So we're starting off by soaking the light with water to keep the surface lubricated. And I'm grabbing the first sanding pad and working it in an up and down motion to begin with. Once you pick the direction for each step, you need to stick with it, as I will explain in step two why this is important. There we go, lovely. Now we just need to take a microfiber cloth, which doesn't come with the kit, ironically, and just wipe it away. Now what you are going to see here is, it is going to look very cloudy, even worse than what we started with. But you just gotta stick with the process, not panic, and it will look good, you'll see. So presuming you've followed the instructions like so, and just gone in a straight line, up and down, or left and right, whichever of you're choosing, you should have something like this. Now, if we pick up the same pad again, you'll see it's got number two on this side. We wanna face side number two downwards and go in the opposite motion as to what we've just done. So once again, we are actually gonna to have to spray the lights yet again with a bit more water and then we can get cracking. So the reason I'm sanding in a crisscross pattern is to ensure an even surface wear, smooth out the scratches from all angles and prevent grooves. And by doing this, it will help you achieve a clearer, more polished finish on your headlights. So at this point, it's still not going to look great. So again, do not panic. This is just part of the process. You have to make a mess to clean a mess. So you can see we've still got a very hazy headlight, but at least it's starting to look even. So now we wanna take our number three and we're going to go up and down again. So we're gonna repeat the process exactly the same as we did with process number one. For step three, be extra thorough and be careful not to drop the sanding pad as you approach the edges, so you may need to pinch it to stop it falling out of your hands. Also, you do need to keep washing the pads if you want to get the best performance out of them. I mean, at this point, you can really start to see it coming together now, which is quite reassuring. You can see it all working. 
Just give it a quick wipe over and then we can then move on to step number four. Speaking of which, it was just a case of moving the pad left to right one more time before we could then move on to the next step. So I don't know if you can remember, when we go back to step one, when we were sanding it, you are getting all this white, crusty, dead coating, all like just coming off the lights. And now we're at a point when, look, there's nothing on there. It's literally just water. So we've gone as far as we can go with this step. So now we can move on to the polishing stage. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. We've just finished the fourth step. So let's go back to the instructions and see what they now say. So it says, once complete, buff out the sanding marks. Follow the one step directions on the box, bringing the lens back to perfect clarity. Okay, so I'm guessing there's gonna be some instructions on how much products I need to put on the pad. Possibly, is there on the box? Do you know what? There isn't, you know, there's nothing on here. If you're somebody who's a beginner and you're just picking this up and you read the manual and it then says, right, look at the one step instructions on the box. There isn't an all, there is nothing. Now, okay, look, common sense would say you'd put some of this product onto your wall pad, but it doesn't talk about really how long you should be doing it for, how much pressure you should be applying, is there any direction you should be going? Now, if you are a beginner, these are the types of questions that you are going to be asking. So. I don't know if there's some sort of misprint here on the instructions or the box, but I think somebody's made an error. Right, so I've finally found some information which is inside the label on the bottle. It's not on the box, so just one more thing to consider if you do go for this. It says, apply to cool, clean surface in the shade. Test an inconspicuous area first. And it says, apply a small amount onto the applicator. So we're actually just gonna put small amounts onto our little mop head here and then just work it in a small section at a time, a wipe off with a clean microfiber, and we're good to go. After a quick shake, peel and squirt, it was time to start polishing. And I started slow to avoid any sling, and then I speeded up the process in an overlapping motion. A few moments later, I was confident it had worked. Oh wow, that is beautiful, look at that. Well, the light looks good, the rest of the car's a bit rubbish, but honestly, I'm really happy with that. Now that I've completed the test, what did I really think about the kit? Look, there's no question about it. The comparison between these two headlights is night and day. There are a few drawbacks though, which I think, I don't know whether they're gonna put you off necessarily, but it certainly would put me off if I wanted to look after these long-term. Bearing in mind, this is just a one-step product. Yes, you can get these results, but no, you're not protecting it afterwards. You are going to need some sort of protection or give it six months down the line and they're gonna be back to square one. Now, if you wanted to go one step further and you did want to protect your lights for longer, you can go for their second kit in the lineup. This isn't the only one available. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there because it's not just a case of buying the kit. You still need to consider the fact you have to get a drill. That's a given with any product. But you also need a little bucket for you to put your little sanding pads in. You need a clear plastic bottle for you to put water in to use it. You also need gloves because you are going to be holding some sort of hazardous chemical. You need masking tape to protect protect around the lights and you need two microfiber cloths, one for the scummy plastic and one for removing the polish. Now there is just one more tiny thing that we need to mention and it's all about these wall pads here because I've done this in a nice controlled environment. I've not been outside in the elements and this has blown fibers literally everywhere all over the vehicle. Be prepared to make a mess if you're going to do this. Now, if you're purely doing it for the purpose of selling your vehicle and you're not really fussed about protecting it, I think this kit will be plenty good enough, but for goodness sake, do your headlights first before you even think about washing the car. I know that might sound quite mad, but honestly, the mess that I've made in here with such a simple task, it could be a lot worse for you. So just bear these little things in mind. Anyway, talking about Meguiar's, if you're curious about any of their other products like Ultimate Compound or Ultimate Polish, then go check out this video right here.